Hi everyone, thanks for joining in on this short video on Hitchcock's Rope. Please view the film first before watching this, as there are spoilers contained herein. A film initially panned by viewers, Rope has become a film school favorite as a teaching tool for blocking, the arrangement of actors on a stage, and editing, the arrangement or assembly of shots in a scene. The film's 10-shot makeup, masked by fluidly choreographed camera moves, create a sense of seamlessness where the entire movie appears to all be filmed in one continuous camera take. The editing of Rope is arguably the smoothest of all of Hitchcock's films, where several cuts are masked by a camera movement into a dark in-frame object and cutting when the lens is obstructed. While our sophisticated eyes can now see where these cuts take place, Hitchcock's experiment here is still emulated in many contemporary films that utilize the continuous take aesthetic, like Mike Figgis's Time Code, Alexander Socorro's Russian Ark, and Alejandro Iñárritu's Birdman. A lot has been said about how Hitchcock is the master of suspense, but I actually think it might be more appropriate to dub Hitch the master of dissonance. The Hitchcock films that we have seen in class so far seem to deal with this clashing of ideas or clashing of motif, a pervasive threat of darkness or evilness at the core juxtaposed against an idealized, nostalgically appealing exterior. We see this dichotomy work itself out in Rebecca, Shadow of a Doubt, and Spellbound where appearances often belie what is underneath the surface. If you can recall, Manderley, Uncle Charlie, and Dr. Murchison all seem to possess a majestic, strong exterior, but possess a dark secret that must be unearthed, excavated, and exposed by the forces of good, Mrs. De Winter, young Charlie, and Dr. Peterson. This quality of contrast that we detect in literature and film is called dissonance, or more specifically, narrative dissonance. Dissonance tends to play out in the clashing of opposing forces. You can think of narrative dissonance as a bunch of opposites, the interplay between good and evil, light and darkness, beautiful and grotesque, human and inhuman. What's so great about the film Rope is that there is an underlying, all-encompassing design of the film that seems to echo this dissonance idea. Seven well-to-do guests at a cocktail party in a fairly fancy New York apartment on the surface, all seems well. Two well-dressed hosts, fancy gloves, martini glasses. But all of this is underscored by the greatest MacGuffin of all, a dead body in the living room chest. The pleasant party is juxtaposed with the notion of death, and these two elements create dissonance in the mind of the viewer. So even though on the surface everything seems to be copacetic, this film's narrative dissonance creates an ambient culture of dread, foreboding, and many things unspoken. The visual symbols also support this idea. The opposing hand injuries on both Philip, he injures his right hand at the party, and on Rupert Cadell, who injures his left, are curiosities in the script that might place both men on opposite sides of a moral balance. And the flashing green and red lights at the movie's climax serve as a visual reminder of the clashing forces of good and evil. It makes sense that Hitchcock was thinking about all these things as he was filming, as he was not a fan of leaving things up to the editor. So Hitchcock created these juxtapositions in the script and in the mise-en-scene so that the final product is a text that is very, very layered. As one final tidbit on dissonance, one final layer if I can add, did you notice that the character of Philip goes to the piano and plays a piece of music several times in the film? Sorry, I, I don't like to play with light in my eyes. Francois Poulenc's piece, titled Perpetual Motion No. 1, is a metaphorical statement to the story's dark theme and placid characters. The music, which starts pleasant, turns almost sour in the middle as one hears a melody clashing with chords that are not played in the same key. You know, Philip, I get quite intrigued. The subtle musical cues, the discreet lighting choices, and seemingly innocuous dialogue make for a film that even the screenwriter Arthur Lawrence identifies as a recipe for suspense. But driving with you and Philip now might have an additional element of uh, suspense. A video right, of Poulenc's Philip. music and other videos Those about this peculiar movie are linked in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. See you next time.